Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 185 in the series of basic math. Today we'll have our fifth lesson. Today we will have our fifth lesson in the series of 10 on the topic of probability. Let's see what we have for today. Typically I put, the I put the problem on the blackboard ahead of time but I forgot. So here's the problem. We are told that in a college, we are told that in a college, in a college, 75% of the students, 75% of the students are female. We are further told that we are, we are further told that a third a third of the of the female students a third of the female students are over the age of 30 are over are over the age of 30 question is very simple what are the odds what are the odds that a student a student picked at random happens to be a female over 30. What are the odds that if you were to pick one student at random that it, that student happens to be a female over the age of 30? Well, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. So there are two there are two steps here, so we take care of one step at a time. 75% of students, we are told, are female. So that's the first part we look at it. So pretend, start out with 100 students. Now, sometimes, actually, actually sometimes, they make it, they try to make it more intimidating by telling you that in a college, in a college of, I'm just going to make here, I'm just going to make up a number here, in a college of uh, 4,700 students. And, and if they do that, if they do that, if they give you a figure here in a college of 4,700 students, your job is to simply ignore it. It plays no role. We're not interested in, they're not asking us, the problem is not, problem is not asking us how many female in the college are over the age of 30. They're not asking us how many. They're simply asking us for the odds. What are the odds that if I were to pick one student at random, that student happens to be a female over the age of 30, the odds of picking either a female or a male over the age of 30 or under the age of 30 has absolutely nothing to do with how many students there are in the school. Absolutely nothing at all. It's just the odds. So pretend that there are 100 students. Pretend that there are 100 students to start out with. If there are 100 students, we are told that 75 of them are female. So here's our female. Here's our male. We are told that 75 of them are female out of 100. Out of every 100, 75 of them are female. 25 is male. This 25 that I just put here was a waste of time. We're not interested in the male, but that's what it is. We are told that a third of female are over the age of 30. We are done. So just break it up. If a student happens to be a female, then she, she's going to fall in one of two categories. Either she's going to be older students or a younger students. Either she's going to be over the age of 30 or under the age of 30. Those are the only two categories we are interested in. Under 30 and over 30. Well, we are told that a third, a third of the students, you have to pay attention, it doesn't say, I, I just said it myself by mistake, it doesn't say a third of the students, it says a third of the female students. It doesn't say a third of all the students over, are over the age of 30, it doesn't say that, it says a third, a third of the female students. Female students are right here. A third of these people, a third of these are over the age of 30. What's a third of 75? A third of 75 is 25 which means a third of the students are over the age of 30. 25 of them are over the age of 30. There you go, voila, that's it. A 25 students out of a total of 100 happens to be over the age of 25. A 25 students out of, out of a total of 100 happens to be females over the age of 30. 25 students out of 100 happen to be, happen to be female over the age of 30. Therefore, the odds, the odds of picking, odds of picking, a female, a female 
over the age of 30 is right here, is this 25%. There is a 25% chance that if you were to pick a student at random, that that student will turn out to be, first of all, not only a female, but an older female over the age of 30. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more problem. The next problem that we'll do is also obviously a probability problem because that's what we are doing, but it's the probability problem which involves the use of Venn diagram. Let's take a look at it. Just give me one second so I can get out of your way. Let's take a look at it. I should have raised the day, day 185. We are told that in a group of 270 students, in a group of 270 students, now you can you can tell you can tell immediately even before you rest the, even before we read the rest of the problem, you can tell immediately that if this problem if this problem deals with the notion of probability, if they're talking about the odds of picking this or that, the odds of picking this or that has absolutely nothing to do with how many students you have. That information is superfluous, it's unneeded, it's unwanted, it's gratuitous, it, it's not required. Do you understand? It is. This information is superfluous, it is gratuitous. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, in a group of 270 students, 35 students, 35% 35 of the people we are told, 35 study music. 35% we are told study music. We are further told that 18% study 18% study foreign language. We are told that 18% study foreign language. We are told furthermore, furthermore we are told that 7% of these students, 270 students study study both. They study both a foreign language and music. Here, here are the questions. We, we're going to answer three, to three different questions. So here's the first question. The first question is, what are the odds? What are the odds that a student picked at random studies music but not foreign language. It studies music but not foreign language. We're going to answer this question but in order for us to be able to answer this question we have to take this information 35, 18 and 17 and put it in the Venn diagram. If you put in, put, if you present it in terms of Venn diagram it makes it much easier to analyze the whole thing. It makes it much easier to keep track of the whole thing, it's less likely that you'll be confused. If you don't do it without the Venn diagram, there's a very good chance that you might confuse something. So let's put it together. So we're going to put it in two, group, in two groups, music and foreign language. Let's, let's start then. Music and foreign language. As I said, this, this number 270, this 270 that we, are told, that we were told, as I told you before, it is, it is superfluous. It is not needed. It is not required. It is unwanted, unneeded, unrequired, unnecessary, unwarranted, uncalled for. There is no need for it. It is superfluous. It is gratuitous. The reason why I am not putting the word gratuitous on the blackboard is because I don't know how to spell it. Superfluous, I am looking at it. If you just give me one second, I will tell you which day we learned the word in our vocabulary lesson in the event that you are interested in improving your vocabulary. Day number 47. Day 47. Vocabulary, day 47, just type in whichever exam that you are preparing for, whether you are preparing for GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, doesn't matter, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day 47, or, or, or GMAT vocabulary words, day 47, and the video will pop right up, learn the word, and along with it you will learn these other words, which is right here, GRA, G-R-A-T-U-I 
T O U S. Gratuitous. They're synonym. Gratuitous means the exact same thing as superfluous. It means something that is unneeded, unwanted, unrequired, uncalled for, unwarranted. Uh, there is no need for it. It's just there. It's extraneous. The fact that there are 270 students in the class plays absolutely no role because, as, as we said before, nobody is asking us how many. They're not asking us how many students study music, how many students study foreign language, how many students study neither. They're not asking us how many. They're asking us what are the odds. When you're talking about the odds, the absolute number plays no role. Just ignore it. It's just there to annoy you. It's just there to annoy you. So here we go. So here is our music, and here is our foreign language. Okay, pay attention. Here is our music, and here is our foreign language. First thing first, we are told that the music is 35%. We are told that 35% of the people study music. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to put down the percentage sign. We're going to pretend that there are 100 students. Okay? So 35 students study music, we are told. We are told that 18 of them study, 18 of them study foreign language. Are you with me so far? Then they go on to tell that 7 of them study both. 7 of them study both. Pay very close attention. This is where the things are going to get prickly. 7 of them study both. As soon as you put that 7, listen very carefully. As soon as you insert the 7 in the middle, which is the common area, which is which is the common area, it belongs to both both the people who study foreign language and it belongs to the people who study people who study music. It belongs to both of them, seven of them. As soon as we put this seven there, then this seven that we put here are the exact same seven people who are represented here. These 35 people, out of these 35 people, out of these 35 people, seven of them also happen to study foreign language. Again, one more time, out of these 35 people, seven of them also study foreign language, which means if you put seven here and leave this 35 as 35, we're going to end up counting the seven people twice. We're going to end up counting the seven people here and the exact seven people over here in 35. We can't double count them. So we have to go and adjust this figure. This 35, we need to take away seven from it, and the 35 is going to become 28. The same exact logic applies here. As soon as we put a seven here, these 18 people that you see here study foreign language, and out of those 18 people, out of these 18 people that you see, also study music, which is why the seven is here in the common area. But this 18 already has this 7 in it. We are counting the 7 people twice. We are counting the 7 people twice. We cannot do that. You have to subtract 7 from 18. It becomes 11. So this is the most important part. Make sure you go back and adjust your figure immediately. Immediately. Right away. Without delay. As soon as you insert the figure in the middle. That's it. We are done. Now here's the, here's the next step. Now we add up all the figures. 28 plus 7 plus 11. Let's do it here. 28. 28 plus 7 plus 11. 28 plus 7 plus 11. 7 plus 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. 6. Carry 1. 4, 3, and 4. 46. So that's only 46 people. We start out with 100%. The class class has to be obviously made up of 100% of people. It obviously it's just common sense that our total of 100%. This only accounts for 46% of the people. What happened to the remaining 54 people? What happened to the remaining 54% of these 270 people. Now that goes outside. That goes in what is known as that goes in what is known as the universal set. It goes outside in what is known as universal set. I'm going to put it here with the red color so you can see it. It goes outside. This big box that we see outside is the universal set. It is called it is so called it is called universal set because it represents our entire universe. Our entire universe in this in this problem is made up of 100% of the students. We have accounted for only 46% of the students. We have to account for 54 more people. They go right here outside. Now we can answer all the questions that they ask. And that's it. This is the most important part. We have done. The, we have. We have invested our time in setting up the problem properly. Once the problem is set up properly, we can answer any question that they're asking. So let's answer the question. What are the odds? What are the odds that a student picked at random studies music but not foreign language? He studies music. He studies music, but not foreign language. This is right here. 28 people out of 100. 28 people out of 100 study music, but not foreign language. The answer is 28 percent. What are the odds that the student picked at random? He studies music, but not foreign language. Let's look at second problem. Let's look at second problem. What are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds that a student picked at random studies foreign language 
but not musical. Well, the art is the student picked at random to study foreign language. Well, there are 18 people who study foreign language. 11 plus 7, 18 people study foreign language. Out of those 18 people, 11 of them study only foreign language. They do not study music. 7 of them study both foreign language and music. What are the odds that a student picked at random studies foreign language but not music? Well, that's 11%. That's 11%. The answer to this question is 11%. So that, asks, that was our second question. That was our second question. What are the odds that the student picked at random studies foreign language but not music? The question answer is 11%. Let's do the third one. What are the odds that the student picked at random studies? What are the odds that the student picked at random studies? Neither. What are the odds that the student picked at random studies neither? But that's right here. In the school, in this school, we know that 46% of the students, 46% of the students, listen very carefully, 46% of the students study either music or foreign language or both. Out of 100 students, 46% study either music or foreign language or both. That tells us that 54% of the people must not study either. What are the odds that the student picked up a random studies neither music nor foreign language? The odds are 54%. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.